All right, so this is uh, my test. I'm testing it today before I start recording my uh, my uh, watercolor 101 demos that I teach at the Kirkland Art Center. So this is just a test. I'm gonna see how it works out. I'm gonna be doing a red pepper from start to finish, seeing if my camera can uh, can do it. If I'm able, I'm actually gonna be able to do it live. So I'm gonna start with um, basic color here. Some with the red pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and put in. A red nice and nice and light again I'm, st I'm starting with a T consistency nice big brush big shapes first off the background here notice I'm also laying it down like a mop I'm not starting and stopping I'm trying to keep the brush on the paper as long as I can one of the things that I notice a lot with students is they just kind of they start and stop. They 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 treat the brush like a like a pencil, which it is not. So again, I'm just putting in the big shades, put a little bit of yellow in here just to let it mix a little bit. Again, I have my people at paper out here at an angle. Big shapes. I'm going to go to my French Ultramarine Blue. While this is still a little bit wet, so the, I was using my Quinacridone Core for the red. Now a little bit of blue, still very light. Not going to my really dark values yet. That's toward the very end. So again, nice. Just put some of these nice warm values in here, or cool values in here. But this is kind of a warm purple anyways. Warm and cools. I'm just going to use a damp brush at this edge here to soften it up. Maybe just go a little bit darker right in here. It's a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my green in. I'm going to go to mix it. Use my French ultramarine blue and my yellow. Since I'm pretty much just going to be using the primary colors, my quinacridone coral, my Hansa yellow, Hansa yellow medium, and my French ultramarine blue to create my use those to create my secondary colors also again nice and light use a little more yellow and I'm just very wet on wet again laying down these sh values and shapes so let me add a little water to that <clears throat> This might the red might oh, it's drying so but sometimes you do get a little blooms when you hit and it's hitting there a little bit. That's fine. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more, more blue. I'm gonna glaze or just layer French ultramarine blue right in this area. Use a little bit more pigment. So right in here. It's still wet, which is nice. Because the water is running down this way so you can see this is dry here how I can see how the dampness is here now I did forget one little highlight which is going to be here I'm going to see if I can no oh, I can't let that was dry already so I'm just going to scrub it in if I can looks like I can't Looks like I can. I think I can. I think I can. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a little water. Leave it right there. Paper towel. Just quickly go up. Oh, nope. Not really. We're just fine. Just leave it there. Pick up some of these values here. Put a little bit of yellow right up here. And that is my first wash. I got everything put in. I'm not going to worry too much, but I'm not going to worry about the background right now. Um, but I have my my warms, 
Got my red, my purples, a little bit of shadows, a little bit, a little bit of my red reflection here, a little bit um, <clears throat> of a purple in the shadow here, which I will build up on the next layer, um, and then put in a little bit of my darks. So this kind of works out here because it's the shadow of uh, of the stem right here. So that's the first step. So now that it's dry, I'm gonna go ahead now and put in the middle the middle values. A little bit more pigment. Now I'm going to be using the milk consistency. I'm going to go ahead and put in the shadows first. Deepen those shadows. All you want to do is just layer, right? So, but you got to make sure that uh, the first layer is completely dry. A little more pigment. Let me load up that brush. Notice I'm still using my big brush here. Because it's uh can really control how much color comes out of it. Using the side of the brush here. Using a little bit more color. Now I'm just gonna start deepening some of those values that I've I already just painted in. Now sometimes I might just be able to do this in one in one go or this 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 second or these middle values in one go from start to finish because of the sim the simplicity of uh, the simple shape and the simple subject which is the red pepper. Um so it's not always middle ground or background middle ground and foreground. Um, it all depends on your subject matter. So again, just deepening some of these values. And since I missed a highlight there, which is fine, I'm just going to go around and kind of create another one here. Go right into there. I'm just painting very loose, right? I'm just whatever shape I see, I paint in. I'm not worrying too much, you know, about trying to replicate the picture exactly. Because honestly, no one's going to know what the pepper looks like. Just lay down the value, the color. Really just have a good time when you're painting. That's really what it's all, what it's all about. Shadow there. I just put a little more purple, deepening up some of these values in here. Again, you really want to. Try to control how much pigment you use. That's why this simple shape is great for really learning your brush. That's really what it comes down to is how to use that brush correctly. Eventually it should be an extension of, you know, you're more really artists that, that paint a lot. Just It just becomes a like a finger you're painting with. So again, I'm going to put a little bit of that blue. More of that red, more of that blue. Actually, in blue, just using my painting and my second, my uh, secondary colors. I'm just adding a little bit of sepia. To me, sepia is great for really darkening some values. And also with that French ultramarine blue, that sepia makes a nice... A beautiful uh, complex black, as I call it. Just kind of let them mix in there. More purple. Let's 
soften it up the edge here. Maybe just grab some more blue. Just really going right out of right off the palette here. Really giving a lot of such really color. Let that mix. I think I'm gonna pull some of that blue into my pepper here. All right, now I'm gonna go into my green. I'm gonna grab a little smaller brush now. I have a really number, I think number 20. This is my number 11. And get my green going here. It's gonna be dark in the bottom. Add a little blue to that. And just again slider. A little water, kind of soften this up a little bit. Add a little blue to this here. <clears throat> Pretty much. Done that. Grab just pure blue under here. A little bit of sepia. Darken that up right there. And I think it's pretty dark right here. Now notice it's still wet, so it's just kind of mixing in there. And that's what you're going for. Here, okay. Lines there. Go ahead and just put a little bit really dark value, some little purple again. And then just just with my brush, just tapping some edges. Using that brush to do most of the work. It's got it's like a perfect little teardrop shape. So I'm gonna use that to my advantage. A little more color, more value. There it is. Some little darker shapes in here. Little harder shapes is uh, watercolor is a series of lost and found edges. So again, make this edge right here. Use that right there. Maybe here. And I do use a little bit of line work, and I'm okay with that. I used to be an animator, so I use all my little techniques, little tricks of the trade that some people might um, frown upon. But you know what? Painting is about having fun and experimenting with techniques. And I'm just having a good time, you know? Let the other fools worry about work I paint for a living all right so notice um, I think that's pretty much done with that and then I'm just gonna go put some blue um, French ultramarine blue in the background so you will notice that with the white it's kind of very stark but now I'm gonna go ahead and put this blue in there and um, Maybe I make it a little bluish green. So maybe just put a little. And just add it in there. Plenty of water. And I'm going to I'm want to really, again, using my big brush again, want to really have a sense of um, contrast. So again, I'm dealing, you're dealing with a lot of, you know, a warm subject. And then now I'm putting a cool around it and 
warm colors tend to come forward cool colors tend to recede so I'm playing off that all right so the test kind of ended but the good thing it caught the last thing I was trying to say which was uh, you know we have warm and cools so warms tend to come forward cools tend to recede so this is the final pepper here um, nothing fancy just nice and loose colors aren't that great from the camera but you kind of get the picture and how I laid it down so thank you and I uh, hope to have more of these uh, posted on my YouTube channel Again, I'm, uh, my name is Che Lopez. I am an instructor, watercolor instructor at the Kirkland Art Center. I teach watercolor 101, watercolor 102, teen drawing and painting. Um, and I also teach at Pratt in Seattle, acrylics. So uh, visit my website at The Art of Che. Thank you very much.